Hello and welcome to Bowls of a TV. Let's take a look at this week's headlines. We talked to Dr Jones from Crestwall Crags about how a small bone can unearth more of the Crags history than meets the eye. World AIDS Day is on the 1st of December and people are asked to support it by wearing a red ribbon. 840 people took to the streets around the district as they took part in the annual Clown Half Marathon. And Bullsover is welcoming Santa this December as he will be taking part in the town's lantern parade. But first, Oldsover District Council is continuing its commitment to look after older and vulnerable people after the first phase of a refurbishment programme at Jubilee Court in Pinkston has been completed. The independent living accommodation on Cakestead Road has seen the accommodation remodelled and upgraded and providing the residents with improved and more modern facilities. Our reporter Charlotte Ellis takes up the story. Dating back to the 1970s, this council-owned facility provides accommodation for those who not only want their independence, but also the peace of mind in knowing that someone is there if needed. Over the past five years, Bolsover District Council has spent in excess of £10 million on refurbishing and modernising its sheltered accommodation in Cresswell Clown, Shirebrook, Hillstown, and now it's Pinkston's turn. This continued commitment to looking after the elderly and vulnerable has seen the first phase of a £2.75 million investment come to a close, with 16 newly refurbished flats completed and ready to be moved into. The council has upgraded and improved the facilities at the complex, including changing the bed sits to one bed flats, complete with wet rooms, to make it easier for residents to bathe. The new accommodation is light and airy, and residents had a choice of what colour they would like for their fixtures and fittings, such as carpets or vinyl flooring and kitchen units. The makeover is part of the council's safe and warm scheme and also includes upgrades to the communal heating system, a new sprinkler system and fire safety measures installed, and a refurbished communal area, complete with an outside patio which will be provided for the comfort of the residents. The scheme will also include two semi-detached bungalows, which will be completed in the summer of 2024. Residents have started to move into their new flats, and with Phase 2 due to get underway, the residents of Jubilee Court can rest easy, knowing the council is looking after them and keeping them safe and warm. In the last of our series of Unearthed at Cresswell Crags for 2023, we take a look at a small bone from a mountain hare that was found at the entrance to Robin Hood's cave in the 1960s. You may think, mm, well, that doesn't sound very interesting, but this small bone reveals a lot more about the crags than what's on the surface. Dr Jones tells us more. So at first glance, this isn't probably the most interesting of bones because it's quite small. So this is um, the top part of a humerus, so an upper arm bone of a mountain hare. But what's quite interesting about this is that it has um, a microscopic um, cut marks um, and they were made by Homo sapiens in the Ice Age. Some scientists have done studies of sort of the hairs, the mountain hairs that were found at Cresswell Crags, um, and they looked at the various cut marks and it showed that humans were um, sort of using the whole of the hair. So they were skinning the hair, they were um, taking away the meat to be able to eat, they were probably using the fur for things maybe like clothing or something to hold something with, and they're also making tools from the bones as well. Well, the things that you find in, in the crags is like pieces of a jigsaw. <clears throat> Definitely, yeah. So um, we might find a stone tool which might tell us that this was one of the tools that people used to be able to survive in the Ice Age. Uh, we'll find evidence of their diet. Um, there's evidence of a half, so they were having like fire um, within, uh, I think, Mother Grundy's parlour. Every single piece that we find is probably really important in piecing together mm -hmm. what we can know about the Ice Age. Eight hundred and forty people entered the Clown Half Marathon on Sunday the 19th of November. Despite the cold, windy and at sometimes wet conditions, the runners braved the elements and enjoyed the undulating 13.1 mile course. 
The winning time was 1 hour 14 minutes and 59 seconds and it was a tie between Thomas Shaw of Worksop Harriers and Shane Grace of St Teresa's AC. Everyone who took part enjoyed the race and each runner that finished received one of the special hoodies. Former councillor Rose Bowler was bestowed with the title of Honorary Alderman at a special event recently. Rose stood down from the council in May 2023 after representing her communities for more than 20 years and held various positions within the authority. Staff were also recognised as the annual staff awards were held which saw the housing repairs team scoop the team of the year, Alice Willoughby receive the Rising Star Award and Louise Arnold win the leading and aspiring award. The 30th anniversary of the Bolsover Lantern Parade will take place on Saturday the 2nd of December in the town centre. Starting at Bolsover Castle, the stunning light show featuring community-made lanterns will travel through the town, creating a beautiful spectacle that culminates at the Cenotaph for Christmas carols. Bolsover residents can also take advantage of exclusive free access to Bolsover Castle between 10am and 4pm with proof of Bolsover residency, such as a utility bill. World AIDS Day is to be held on the 1st of December this year. Globally, an estimated 38 million people live with the virus and more than 35 million people have died of HIV or AIDS-related illnesses over the past 40 years. World AIDS Day exists to shine a light on the real experiences of people living with HIV today, while celebrating the strength, resilience and diversity of the communities most affected. The red ribbon is the universal symbol of awareness and support for people living with HIV and you can show your solidarity by purchasing a red ribbon today. And finally, Bolls of the Rotary Club have a special guest this December as Santa himself will be making an appearance in the town and surrounding areas to spread some Christmas joy. Santa will be attending the Bolls of the Lantern Parade, local supermarkets and will be in the town itself just before the big day to meet and greet local children and maybe give the odd present or two out. We met up with the man himself who had his naughty and nice list at the ready and he was very excited at coming to Bolsover District. The big thing that's coming up short term is the lantern parade that goes throughout Bolsover and uh, we use the sleigh uh, in ahead of all the other people, there are the lanterns, uh, all the various cubs and all that sort of thing, the scouts. Um, and it becomes every part of the streets around Bolsover is people with children and screaming out for Santa and it's wonderful. <laughs> and then I'll be visiting various locations, Tesco's, um, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, and then towards the end, I, and it's about the 23rd, I think it is, uh, we're in Bolsover with the sleigh by the cenotaph. And that's where the children get to see Santa and one or two of them will leave with the gift. Of course. And so, you've, you've got your nice list there. I have. And your naughty list. Yeah, I have. Yeah. And do you know which one you're on? I dread to think. Can you check? But Santa knows everything. So you can't get away with it. If you're not good during the year, Santa knows, and that's what that's for. So be kind, be generous to everybody else, and Santa will bring you a present. Well, Charlotte, doesn't look like you've made Santa's nice list, but I'm sure all the boys and girls across the district have and can expect a few presents on the big day. But I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. Please join us next week when we'll be looking at a church meals project in Whitwall and a lady in Pinkston turns 100. But from me and the team, goodbye. Goodbye.